are you sitting comfortably? Well, you'll probably still feel breathless after getting to know a bit about Sunshine Tour champion Peter Carmis and how he's stepping up his fitness regime as he looks to make further progress in his career. Basically, this is my four days a week training schedule. There's a lot to be done and there's only so much time in the day, but generally this is what I do to be a better athlete. You do, you do a little bit, okay, you do a little bit more thrusting. Obviously, when you first turn pro, it's not easy to identify what one needs to do. And what I liked about this training as well, it wasn't just specifically for golf. It was general athleticism as well. And there are obviously components that are specific for golf, but the thing that really appealed to me was I was going to be an athlete and that's what I wanted to be. There's plenty of physicality, but it's tied into mentality too. We'll try not to blind you with science. Hey, we've even found an expert with a golfing name. When we're working with early developmental movement in how the brain develops, how the brain interacts with the muscles, so we have a much greater neurological focus and a greater focus on individual movement patterns and how they sequence to affect ultimately the performance of the athletes. And for Peter, dare I say, there's been no hanging around. He's taken to the athletes' training very readily. We've seen a remarkable uh, improvement uh, in Peter. When he first came to me and we did uh, the initial assessment, the bad news was that there's no shortcuts in professional sport. And we told him that it's going to be at least two and a half years before we could correct his lower body movement because some of the movement patterns just weren't there. If we were to see a picture now from the way he's seeing a big reverse C, he had a lot of compression, hit the ball with a lot of speed. We've changed that dramatically now. It's very neutral lumbar spine, so have a lot lower risk of injury. His power output's increased dramatically. More importantly, with the movement patterning, his consistency and his accuracy has greatly improved. It's nothing new to consider golfers as athletes, but I wouldn't be surprised if even Gary Player were impressed with this regime. The Mega Wave test basically tests my ability to train on the day. For my trainers, getting the data from that, they are able to adjust the training load that I'm going to experience. It's new for me to get some sort of data on how I'm actually feeling because sometimes how you're feeling is not how your body actually is. So that's what's great about that thing. It actually gives you proper data from which to base your load for the day. I might just stick to picking up that cup of tea. With SAQ, they don't leave anything out. So we actually do medicine ball, we do weight training as well, but the core of it is training the neurological pathway. So basically getting the mechanics of movement the way you want it. More of the muscle you're trying to stimulate so that you actually don't get lazy, um, because obviously the brain apportions load for whatever you're doing. So if you're picking up a cup of tea, you don't throw it in your face because your brain knows how much it weighs and it applies the appropriate force. With a lot of the training, we're trying to um, overcome the brain's ability to apportion load. You want to try and stimulate the whole muscle, use everything you've got as opposed to a fraction of what you actually got there. But it's clear that this is working for Peter and his golf game. He sure is seeing tangible results. The nature of golf is that you kind of get beaten up out there. And I think everyone who plays golf recognizes that. It is a battle on the golf course. Now obviously with us, you need to play well in order to get paid. So the stakes are higher for pros. And what I've found is that the harder that I train, at least with the high intensity kind of workouts, the better my mental capacity to deal with problems on the course, whether it's disappointment or with bad lies, you know, double bogeys the bounce back factor basically how do I cope with those kind of things and also just generally being happier out there because I think you know just the, by very nature of golf it can be grueling on one's sort of composure and I think to play well you need a bit of composure in order to battle it out. He's been battling since turning pro in 2004. He's a winner of four Sunshine Tour events including the Sun Sibaya Challenge at Mount Edgecombe last year a first victory in seven years. At Sabaya it was more relief because I hadn't won in a while and I did go head to head with Oliver at the time and I was playing quite nicely. Quinton van der Berg helped me quite a lot. So I actually saw him in Samola and he just gave me a brief analysis of what I was doing and the one thing was just general weight shift that I wasn't doing correctly and I had no idea of course. Just correcting that just a little bit helped me drive the ball better and that week I drove it very straight. So it's not a very long course but it is fairly narrow, there's a lot of danger and driving it well gave me the opportunity to actually close out. Also being a bit more tough mentally from a lot of the training definitely helped me get through. He hasn't had to wait so long to get through again. The Investec Royal Swazi Open at the start of May this year.
That one was more sweet. I think um, at the time I was under more pressure, so I was a bit more stressed at the time. So to win that I was relieved, but also I didn't feel the kind of joy that I felt with uh, Swaziland, especially the way I finished. I finished birdie birdie, which I needed in order to win. It was an extremely exciting victory. And I don't think I felt like that before, actually. I mean, I won a few times, but that one was probably my favorite win. He seems to have his game and form right where he wants it. He's settled too with his tournament roommate, Keenan Davidza. Keenan and I, we've been rooming together for a few years. He's extremely professional and we have the same goal. We want to play the best we can. We're always trying to make an effort to give 100% and we're also on the same sleep schedule as well. So we generally like to go to bed early and if you have a roommate that likes to go to bed late, it can be a bit of an issue. And I think one of the things with professional golf is that you need to get rest when you're away, but you also need to do the things you need to do on the course. So Keenan and I, we might have slightly different practice or preparation schedules away, but we're accommodating as well. One rule we have is we never talk about the bogey. So we only tolerate birdies or eagles, positive stuff. The next rule is what's our schedule like for the week. Getting all that sort of stuff out of the way in the beginning so that we have a plan of action, we know what we're doing, and then we just play golf. We don't have to worry about where we're eating and all that kind of stuff. We kind of pre-plan what we're going to do for the week. So green means it's 100%. Sure. Orange means everything. His plan of action now, well, quite simply, it's good to have a plan, a strategy, whereas that hasn't always been the case throughout his life as a pro. I think a lot of the problems that I've experienced in my career has been no strategy winging it in general. So I think the last few years especially, I've tried to just have a plan about what to do, when I want to do it, build your practice and everything around it so that you can peak when you want to peak. And rest is also a weapon. When I was in college, my first roommate was a swimmer. So they work flat out most of the year, and then suddenly when they're having their big tournaments coming up, suddenly they're sleeping in all the time and they call it tapering. And all of a sudden they break all their personal bests, some of them get into the Olympics. I always remembered that, but didn't know how to apply it to golf. And I think my younger self, I could find a way to periodize a bit better, know when to strike and when to rest. There is an element of that as well. He's had a natural rest on the Sunshine Tour. Now the focus is getting back on track for the rest of the year and beyond. Well, the season starts in about a month. I want another win. I do tend to prefer playing at the coast. I am used to the coast. We've got quite a few at the coast this year, which is awesome for me. Long-term girl, play at the highest level. Play in the majors, play on you know, European Tour, PGA Tour, basically. If you want to play at the highest level, you can. He's 36 next week, as fit as ever, and he looks very much on course with that plan of action.